You know, lately I've been really trying to buy a house. Hypothetically speaking, I already have a house. And I really don't know all what it entails, but I really need an omen. I need some sort of spark to help me out. I'm pretty sure it's not that complicated. Hey, Ross World, my money makes money. Let's sum this things up. What do, do you need and what should you have prior to getting pre-approved for a mortgage to buy a home, to buy a house? Now, let's really, really think about this. You need, number one, you need proof of income. You need pay stubs and you also need a W-2, maybe for like the past two or three years to let those underwriters, those loans, those banks in order so they can check, hey, does this guy have a job? Has he been working? Is he paying his taxes? All of those things. Now, granted, for you guys who have buku dollars saved up, and you can go out there and drop two to three hundred thousand dollars on a house, then do so. You should never want to owe anybody and be in debt. Even though I always say that a house eventually turns to good debt because it becomes an asset of equity and wealth that you can pull out from from time to time. I'm off of it. Then the second thing you actually need is proof of assets. And you're thinking to yourself, you're like, uh, it's up and to the left, my wife reminded me. Uh, what do I actually need? What do I actually need? Bank statements, account statements, anything that shows you that, hey, this guy is well established. He has all his things in a row. Does he have enough money to even cover the down payment? Which, depending on the type of loan, is about 10 to 20%. Now, let's really think about that. And most home loans, mortgage brokers, they want you to have 10 to 20%. And for FHA, they want around 3.5% or even 4%. Now, the reason for this proof of assets to make sure you have the amount of money coming in in order to put this down payment. These things are very, very imperative. Number three, okay, that was number two. Number three, good credit or fair credit. The reason why I say fair credit, guys, because don't think you need an 800 plus or 720 plus in order to get a house loan or mortgage, okay? Or a line of credit to buy your home. You do not, but it helps. It helps to make the process go more quickly and more smoothly. Now, this is the thing. When we talk about good credit, okay, um, 720 and above. Some people say 750, even though that the range, okay, is the 850. 720 is that nougat, that nugget, that special number that really pushes you past the threshold in order for you to start getting those great credit advantages and bonus when it comes to loans and percentages, okay? Now, people who fall below that, you, you start really getting those high interest rates. Now, you can still get a loan because what? You have proof of income and proof of assets. So like, well, he has the income, he has the assets, but his credit is not that good. Okay, because we don't think you're trustworthy, this is always baffles the out of me. Because you did something in your past, we're gonna judge you by your past because you know credit is lingering, the credit score lingers, even after you didn't became a better person with your money, right? They don't know. So we're gonna make your percentage higher because we wanna make sure you want this thing and you're gonna pay for it. For those guys who've always done good with their finances, we're gonna lower yours. Now I'm thinking, if I'm up here trying to get a home, I'm trying to get a house, and my credit score is kind of like my trustworthiness score, you're gonna make it higher to make it harder for me and more money for me to pay? I kind of get it. I kind of get it. It's a risk. So you're going to make sure you're getting paid for that risk. I got it. I'm off of it. Okay. I'm off of it. Number four, proof of employment or employment verification. However you want to chop it up, guys. Now, a lot of us try to do some scandalous things out here. 
Okay, and this is the list of five of getting pre-approved for a mortgage. Number four, employment verification or proof of employment. Now, some people will lose their jobs. Some people will lose their jobs and still go out and try to buy a home. I don't know. Maybe they're going to try to flip it. They're going to try to sell it. Creep on the come up. However you want to look at it. I don't know. But these are the things that these banks are now checking for. They say, hold up. We need your official job number, okay, your, your place of work, so we can call and verify you still have this job in the salary that you're reporting. Because maybe you got a demotion. Maybe uh, uh, some bonuses got taken away. Maybe they lowered your pay. Because in the federal government and state and even a uh, pro bono or nonprofit organization, time to time, because of budget cuts, they lower your amount. They lower your pay. So they want to verify the amount that you're reporting is 100% accurate. I know you're thinking, I know you're thinking, horrible, horrible, horrible. Whoever wants their pay lowered in order to pay the government money back to itself. Think about that for a while. Number five, documentation. Basic documentation, guys. Social security card, date of birth, credit report, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm talking about. They're going to ask for all sorts of miscellaneous and frivolous and outlandish things like give me a blood sample. What's your DNA? What's your RNA? Uh, give me a, a spinal tap. I don't know. When I was going through the house process again, they asked for more stuff than they did prior to 2008, 2009. I bought my first house back in 2007 and the process was easier, okay? And it was about that much stack of papers if I can really look at it. About that much stack of papers. Now, it's about that thick, okay? Now, if you're in the market of trying to find a home, trying to buy a house, it's probably good to go to like Staples. Are they still in business? Not Home Depot, what's the other one? Staples and Office Depot. And get you one of those little signature things that can count as your signature. Hopefully they don't require you to actually because, hey, you, hey, hey, just stamp it. Just stamp it because you're going to be signing your life away and it gets tiring. And I will give you this one more nugget. Now, these were the five steps, the five things that you need to be pre-approved for your mortgage loan. But I will throw this in there. Read every single document that they have in front of you. Read anything that sounds sketchy, make a note of it and don't sign it, okay? Anything that sounds or, or something you don't understand, ask for clarification before you sign it. Here's another one. When it comes to notarization, most times those people are gonna pay for a notary to come out and notarize as you're signing your house payments, okay? Make sure that you never come out of pocket for the house that you're buying from a lender or whether it be a real estate agency that you pay for the notary. I've seen that before. It is scandalous, okay? It is scandalous. If they want to sell you that $100,000, $200,000, $400,000 home, let them provide the goddamn notary. You ain't coming out of pocket for that crap. So these were the five steps to be pre-approved for a home mortgage or condominium mortgage, any sort of mortgage. Hopefully this helps you. Once again, read every document. And also, my favorite, do your research prior to getting into the home buying business. Prior to, do your research, guys. This is Ross World, where we always used to depend on people to translate and educate us on something. But now, we're going to look that shit up. Excuse my language. I'm out.